Um, so no disclosures for this uh, presentation. Uh, and again, this is um, components of uh, team-based care for um, medication for opioid use disorder. So the objectives today are to describe the importance of using a team-based approach to uh, name the team members that are recommended for an office-based buprenorphine program, to describe the roles and responsibilities of each team member, and to address how your administration can support you in building a team, to recognize how the information provided can help you in your clinical setting. So um, how do we use a team in our clinical setting to leverage our resources? So a note on treatment teams, it's uh, integrated treatment, which again is multiple providers working together, has large body of evidence as a model of treatment for people who have serious mental illness and co-occurring substance use disorder, and is considered the gold standard um, treatment approach by uh, most regulating and research bodies. It allows clients to receive combined treatment for um, mental illness, substance use, and their psychosocial needs from one team who meet regularly to help coordinate care and to convey a consistent message um, about treatment um, and to work with a patient um, so that everything can hopefully be more seamless and, um, and helpful. So there's a difference uh, between multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary. Really, um, interdisciplinary is, um, is, is what we're aiming for here. Multidisciplinary is referring to several different disciplines um, doing work on their particular pieces, um, but interdisciplinary is where each discipline brings a perspective and ideas to the table. Together, the team formulates a treatment plan and together um, work to implement it. So what are some treatment team concepts? So one of these is that recovery um, or the idea of recovery is more than um, just symptom remission or stabilization, that it really involves developing new meaning and purpose in an individual's life and um, really helps to um, uh, define um, um, the individual goals. Treatment, another treatment team concept is that including all of the people um, who work with the patient and the patient um, themselves in the planning process is crucial uh, for success. And if the patient does not have ownership of the treatment plan um, that's developed by the entire team, there's less likelihood they'll do the work um, in the plan. Uh, and so really does need to be, um, again, focus on those patient goals. And infrastructure needs to be in place to promote team cohesion and allow the team to focus on their clinical work. And also there's an expectation that treatment teams will use the treatment plan as the fundamental underpinning for all clinical encounters and interventions. Um, so really is like the um, structure um, that uh, the visits are built on. So there's that consistent thread. So now we'll talk about components of a successful team. You can see um, uh, some component uh, people listed here, program manager, recovery coach, therapist, pharmacist, um, uh, nurse practitioner, PA, physicians. So in the team structure, who's on the team? So the core team includes the, the patient or the client and the primary treatment providers working with that individual. But it also includes their extended team, which is really um, all providers that work with them um, uh, beyond that. So they may work together less frequently. They may be at other agencies. They might be involved in their care at home um, uh, or, uh, for instance, concern significant others. And what is the structure of the team? So really, the team needs to have a focal a lead or manager who's responsible for ensuring that treatment plan um, develop and is followed. Um, and then the team as a whole um, is often the primary person um, working with the team. So that person, that team lead is essential for guidance, but also um, a coordinator or recovery coach who's responsible for organizing team meetings and communication. And depending, I think, on your clinical setting this may um, be, you know, maybe different person may not be. Um, again, would love to hear what has worked uh, for you all um, 
at your at your sites. And this person also makes sure sort of the details are covered, making sure documents and information is tracked and recorded in the treatment plan. And then in addition, as far as the structure of the team, it, it should have flexible yet defined roles for other team members. So really everyone should be able to express what their um, role and scope is um, so that they can fulfill um, that role, but also may be able to step in and fulfill other roles when needed. So we'll talk about the team leader program manager. This is typically um, one of the medical um, providers such as an MD, RN, PA, NP, or independently licensed therapist. This person is a consistent point of contact for the patients and coordinates communication between uh, team members and also between the team and the patient. That person certainly may have some uh, other patient care functions and they may conduct support or education groups for the program. We'll see in a little bit here one model that's been uh, studied and, and published on the Massachusetts model. Um, and in that program and in other programs, we, we often see nurses being most frequently um, utilized and studied in such capacity. So now we'll talk about the recovery coach and engagement specialists. Um, often these will be RNs, CHWs, MAs, peer support specialists. And this does require training to step into this role. Sorry, I haven't silenced my, let's try to silence my, to decrease the dings during the presentation. Sorry about that. Um, so they also can work um, to expand patient services and administrative duties may include, um, probably include more than this, um, but certainly may include prior authorization processing, um, checking uh, prescription monitoring programs, um, this, some of the things mentioned in these slides are reflective of when we had the um, buprenorphine waiver requirement, when we had to maintain buprenorphine logs, um, so that, that has changed with the waiver um, no longer existing. And then other clinical duties um, may include um, certainly taking vital signs, um, checking urine uh, drug screens if necessary, doing pill counts, um, administering um, different uh, rating scales and screenings as well uh, for co-occurring co disorders. Also, um, it's important that these um, individuals be prepared in um, different aspects of patient education. So understanding the basics of buprenorphine, uh, the program expectations and requirements, certainly harm reduction measures, and they um, may pull in other team members if needed. Um, and then also with experience, they might facilitate or co-facilitate groups on overdose pre pre prevention, um, relapse prevention, et cetera. And then they may also provide psychosocial support. So checking in with patients, making referrals as needed, and then um, phone and in-person check-ins with patients. I know at our clinic, I am um, on a daily basis, very grateful for um, colleagues here who um, are checking in with patients frequently and and discussing patient needs and pulling us in as needed. Okay, and referrals can be been, really be um, uh, made usually by anyone on the team. Um, these referrals may include AA, NA, smart recovery, traditional healers, certainly inpatient treatment programs, um, residential uh, programs, and then crisis line phone numbers, providing those as well as um, harm reduction site information. So for access to important uh, syringe exchange or other um, harm reduction, uh, certainly referral for HIV, hepatitis testing and treatment, uh, food resources, emergency housing and utility resources, employment and education, uh, Again, these are often centerpiece to our patient's well-being and so pretty critical part of um, patient care. And then also if further referrals are needed for psychiatric and medical treatment. So now um, moving on in our treatment team to the therapist. Um, certainly some degree of psychotherapy may be recommended for patients on buprenorphine. It might not be um, uh, needed or, or desired by all patients, but important to be able to recognize when this is needed and be able to connect them um, to um, 
to appropriate uh, therapy services. Certainly um, CBT, relapse prevention, MI, um, these are all important skills um, to develop in the clinical setting and contingency management programs, um, if uh, you have that, um, uh, can be very helpful, but certainly being able to refer to one if needed, um, in addition to 12-step groups, if that's more appropriate and desired by the patient. And you can utilize in-house um, uh, resources, certainly, um, but also depending, again, on your clinical setting, um, as needed appropriately, can refer out. Also on the treatment team, um, there may be a pharmacist, um, certainly at some sites. Um, this uh, person would be responsible for naloxone distribution, also providing patient education, um, first responder community education, and then may really help educate providers as well on appropriate, excuse me, chronic pain management, can certainly help identify high risk patients. Um, I think oftentimes our pharmacists just seeing our prescriptions and here for, for sure at an OTP, um, our pharmacists will oftentimes um, see uh, uh, really like important things, flags that come up and notify us. So having communication with your pharmacist is key. Co-prescription of naloxone. And then I would say the next couple of slides refer a little bit more to an older model, the Massachusetts model. I think that our... Um, APNs and physician assistants um, and uh, MDs, we all work together in management of buprenorphine. Um, this changed a bit um, under the CAR Act when APNs and physician assistants fortunately could start prescribing buprenorphine. Um, certainly also manager and administer naltrexone. Um, again, physician here, the first thing listed is physical examination, but I think we all do this in all of our assessments. Um, all of the providers do. We all assess appropriateness for treatment and provide buprenorphine prescriptions. And certainly we all provide training and education to everyone on the, the team. So here's a summarizing table of for buprenorphine programs who might be trained for particular roles. Um, so you can see again, some of the things that I mentioned, the prior authorizations, um, that likely uh, will be, be covered more by uh, front office or, or medical assistants. Um, but basic understanding and being prepared for um, appropriate boundary setting, et cetera, everyone should have a similar training for this. Um, so I think also having, looking down further on this list, having, you know, follow-up and um, scripting as needed. This is all something that should be um, discussed um, as a team and decided upon. And really for the prescription monitoring program, this is maybe practitioner dependent, but I know for instance, I for one just always pull my own because I feel like it's a helpful tool as part of the visit, but we are all required to. So in certain settings, for instance, again, we'll show this Massachusetts model that tries to get a lot of access, a lot of patients seen. So there might be one agent in that case, I think the nurse who's selected for a prescriber to pull that PMP ahead of time. Okay, and here we are going to move to checking about the, um, uh, to talking, excuse me, about the um, Massachusetts Collaborative Care Model, which was developed years ago. This is a team-based approach that um, at that time, there was uh, a much greater uh, shortage of wavered physicians. So again, this was before the CARA Act and certainly before now when we um, no longer have the waiver. Um, when there was really a shortage in buprenorphine um, prescribing and in Massachusetts, this increased increased wavered physicians, this model, um, significantly, 375% within three years. And it also markedly increased patients who were on medication for opioid use disorder and especially um, in minority communities where there had um, been traditionally much less access. Nurse care managers, you'll see, are central to the process. And really one nurse care manager and one MA would sort of oversee and coordinate care for a team um, and would involve 125 patients. This model was found to be viable, financially viable and sustainable. And 
You can see this collaborative care model that um, was published from the Massachusetts model, um, which shows basically an initial screening assessment by nurse care manager. The team then reviewed the chart, um, and then the prescription was really, um, the, the at that time, the physician would come in and write the prescription. It would be filled, and the whole, whole process of starting the patient and monitoring the patient on the treatment was really um, coordinated by that nurse care manager with MD backup. Um, and same for the follow-up visits. So it really um, expanded access um, to care. This is uh, part of their initial screening assessment. You can see that this is kind of part of what you may um, just do on a, a regular basis in your clinical process, practice um, in terms of obtaining the history, education of buprenorphine, um, perhaps um, lab test either at the first or subsequent visit, um, urine drug screening, and then reviewing instructions on how to um, initiate uh, buprenorphine and assess for side effects. So um, the importance of training, I would say buprenorphine uh, waiver training, I'll still say without the waiver, buprenorphine training is still essential um, that everyone feel comfortable in that um, in the medical field um, and that all staff have access to the training as well. Um, I know that when we do the, again, so it was the waiver training, but really would call the buprenorphine training now. We, we love to have all people from the team join into those if they would like to, to learn more details about buprenorphine. Um, also important to continue training to just working in general, decreasing stigma uh, for individuals with substance use disorder, providing ongoing trainings for that, and then um, um, checking in with uh, email backup, um, providing support and answering questions, any concerns in the past. I know for particular, sometimes there were concerns about developing particular policies or billing support. Um, and these are all topics that are covered. This is again, part of that model um, in the, um, the nurse care um, uh, management um, core training program. So potential issues that may arise, being familiar with them, um, and then certainly uh, medical issues, but also management, um, how to address particular concerns that people may have about um, making those referrals, treatment agreements, um, potential diversion, um, et cetera. And what are the roles for clinic administrators for a successful um, implementation of buprenorphine in your clinic? So administration really needs to be there to support the clinical team, allow that space and time for regular meetings, um, ensure coverage issues if someone's going to be out and to make sure that someone can cover, that there is appropriate staffing available, um, allow that time for trainings and continuing education. Um, and sort of overseeing um, that creation of clinic policies and guidelines in conjunction with the team. So what can you do right now? And if you're probably already doing a lot of this, um, certainly be an advocate for your patients, help create an accepting and patient-centered environment, work within the community and beyond uh, to combat stigma, we um, work with tribal, state, national leadership on policies that will help benefit communities, such as funding for treatment, um, perhaps drug take-back programs, um, education for community members. This also helps decrease stigma, increase youth engagement, increase naloxone distribution. And with that, I'm going to stop the share.